couple of years ago I read a posting on a uh, LinkedIn industrial design page that the watch is dead and nobody wears them and we get our time from other sources. Yeah, that's true. I get my time from my iPhone. This is the TicWatch Pro smartwatch which is paired to my iPhone. So, in this uh, personal and rather impromptu review of the TicWatch Pro, I'm including two other watches I own which serve to illustrate some important features. For example, this Pebble watch, which is sadly now out of production, has legendary battery life. And I never even think about it. I probably charge it every six days or so. But it also delivers completely basic useful functionality that is uh, alerting me of notifications. And it's also very light on the wrist. I hardly notice it. So it's superbly comfortable. Now this TicWatch 2 that I also own is the reason I took interest in the TicWatch Pro. The Forerunner is a great watch, very slim and comfortable, with easy navigation between functions. But, 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 oh I got stuck in the groove there, but the battery life is terrible at less than a day. And I'm amazed that any smartwatch owners put up with this. I mean, it, it, it's crazy, you know, don't they ever leave the office, you know, where the charger is? So, let's cut to the chase and look at this TicWatch Pro that I've owned for just a few days. Now, just to remind you, the comments section, I will later be adding my findings about the actual battery life under different conditions. Well, what a beauty. But the problem with a sophisticated and gorgeous smartwatch like this is you need to have it working on full blast all the time to enjoy its beauty and incredible functionality. And if you do, then you're going to run out of battery power before dusk sets in. Without juice in the battery, it's a useless piece of metal, plastic and glass. I'm sure you've heard that before. So the whole point of the watch uh, like this, with its myriad of watch face options, is it's also a piece of body adornment. I mean, you can replicate the Rolex look, but what's the point if the watch automatically blanks out after five seconds? Now, after all the advertising hype of its up to 30 days battery life, it's clear that this will come at a price. The watch automatically switches to its basic LCD essential mode, which offers the basic time, date and battery condition. But the moment you start using the tweakable features, you seriously start eroding the battery life. I had an automatic software update this morning in the middle of a battery test and I somehow went from 85% to 54%. And while mentioning updates, bear in mind that like a smartphone, the gadget you thought you bought can change. And already this update has changed some swipe functions. I'll come on to that later, but it's a point worth noting. So I'm on day four, which really isn't long enough to do a detailed, conclusive review, but I can give you some pointers. The watch does need careful tweaking to optimize battery life and usability to truly meet your needs. I see it as both a tool and a bit of adornment, and I must say I like it, and I'm optimistic I'm going to be able to live with this watch, and that, yes, I'm probably going to have to recharge it every two days on average and once a day if I really dip into its great features or apps like uh, translator, calculator, compass, torch, keep notes, fitness monitoring for when I play badminton, that should be fun. And oh yes, here is a really useful one called Stay Lit. I can extend the display from five seconds to around 10 seconds and I find it makes all the difference. You know it's a bit hard to know where to start in a review so I hope some of you are not frustrated in finding an important question is not being answered or has not been answered yet. Now watch faces while I'm on the subject of useful apps there must be thousands of them and it's taking me hours searching through completely gimmicky and silly watch faces to ones that are actually useful. 
So I discovered this watch face. I find the style somewhat mediocre, but it's about the only one I can find that has five on-screen functions that you can tweak. So let's look at it. I have prioritized the date, the month, and the day of the week, because sometimes I forget what day of the week it is. Battery life is an absolute must at a glance, and I also chose weather, which, unlike my Tick Watch 2, is real-time and quite accurate. An additional function is by pressing on the date, it reveals notifications, which are limited but still useful. Only the first part of a, a text is revealed, so you then have to read the whole text on your smartphone. And the other function is a swipe up to reveal notifications, which include news alerts. Now, in comparison to my Pebble Watch, which has a very distinct vibration alert, the Tick Watch Pro is rather weak, so I often miss notifications. Telephone calls to my iPhone are a nightmare because the ringer is limited, and I often miss them. But the little telephone icon at the bottom of this watch screen does at least give me a chance to get to the phone and answer it before it rings off. Yes, this is primarily designed for Android and I believe its operating system is called Google Wear OS and is the same as Android Wear. Correct me if I'm wrong. But admittedly, the scope of this watch is limited using an iPhone, but I'm finding it plenty useful enough. My only concern is battery life with all these phones. And my guess is that this will be one of the best currently. I think the only main contender is the Samsung Galaxy. But they say a new Android operating system is due in 2018. So battery life could improve drastically. Who knows? Probably. I just have to work around what is what now. And the secret is in tweaking the watch. So this is what I'm doing to get my two days of battery life. I switch off all the screen display gestures so that the top control knob switches on the display. And it also switches on the menu for all the apps. It's not ideal to um, switch on the display like this, but I'm getting used to it. I then tweak the display time to 10 seconds, as I said before. It just gives me more time to digest on-screen information, uh, for instance, if I'm driving. I have disabled apps that I'm not using. I've yet to discover the power consumption of different watch faces. This is very important. Uh, on the Tick Watch 2, there's a point system, and they vary enormously. I try to limit my temptation to use all these fantastic apps because they all seriously erode the battery life. But that's the thing, with all these great features, you want to use them. My guess is the battery life will struggle much beyond 15 hours if you really use this watch in the way it's designed. But as I say, its use as a basic time piece, which is called essential mode, is claimed to last up to 30 days. Well, even if we half that, it's still very good. In comparison, nothing is going to beat my Pebble watch in terms of functionality, or rather basic functionality. And before I invested in the Tick Watch Pro, I used to use my Tick Watch 2 as my Pebble replacement for special occasions. Okay, showing off when I was going out, being seen in public. But the truth is, having to charge it within a day, I just haven't used the Tick Watch 2. So I'm hoping uh, this new watch will bridge the gap. And as the days of the Pebble Watch connectivity will s probably be ending fairly soon, I'm hoping that the Tick Watch Pro is going to be usable for some time to come. The problem is that technology improves so fast and no doubt in a year there'll be a new operating system that dramatically improves the battery life. Now while I'm comparing the three watches and talking about charging uh, let's quickly look at the three different chargers. The Pebble is incredibly easy I can almost locate the tiny charger with my eyes shut 
Similarly with the Tick Watch 2, I can just drop the watch into its little disc cradle at any angle, but with the Tick Watch Pro, it's not quite so easy. I've got to position or line up the terminals and then it has a very very strong magnetic clunk but it takes more care and therefore a little more time to do it so it's actually not that easy of all of them I think the Tick Watch 2 is by far the easiest but on the other hand the Pebble is the most uh, what's the word uh, compact <laughs> now one of the selling features of this watch is the leather strap which is actually lined with silicon rubber on the inside. I don't like it. Um, it's, it's a piece of technology this. I found the leather was just not congruous to you know the essence and, and I, I'm a modern designer. I'm a furniture designer. Um, I'm into innovation in my own work field. So I, I'm not ashamed of the present and there are some fantastic watch straps that are plastic that have improved functionality on leather. I find the leather one a bit stiff and awkward to take off and it's not that comfortable even with the, uh, the lining because this is quite a heavy watch and as such it's going to move around on your wrist unless you, you tighten the strap. So I ordered this plastic or silicon plastic sports uh, strap and I think it looks great and it's as comfortable as my Tick Watch 2 and also the Pebble Watch given that the Pebble Watch is much lighter and you hardly notice it on your hand. Yeah, that brings me on to the point of left-handed, right-handed. As a creative person I'm left-handed but I've always, for as long as I've worn a watch, worn it on my left wrist. But for some unknown reason, I undo the strap much quicker with my right hand. But my left forefinger is stronger, so for using things like a calculator, I will want to wear it on my right wrist. I hope you follow my drift here. I'm slightly caught. Maybe I'm ambidextrous. But... The default mode for me is to wear it on my left wrist, but I've got to use my weaker right forefinger to operate some of the functions. So what I'm saying is occasionally, and I'm sure others do this as well, I take the watch off. In fact, I further, some people take the straps off and just use it as a mini pocket uh, timepiece stroke computer. So it is about comfort and functionality and I think that's what's so fascinating about a watch it represents so much more today uh, you know beyond being a timepiece but first and foremost it it is a timepiece what else can I say the things I probably forgot and what comes to mind is yes the secondary button here it can be customized so currently I've got it set for a torch as being what I think will be the most practical solution when I need it. But I might change it to a calculator. So that's the great thing. You can change the priorities as you can the wrist gestures for, you know, uh, operating the, uh, the display. Now, as well as being um, a furniture designer maker, I'm also a musician. So I'll probably tweak the, uh, the gesture, the wrist gesture, when I'm playing my guitar. <laughs> uh, that'll be fun. Now there are apparently more apps for the Tick Watch Pro than for the Samsung Galaxy. But the Galaxy offers more watch faces. But hang on, we don't need more watch faces. We just need a few really functional ones that also look very expensive or very minimal depending on your taste and it's great that you can just uh, with the latest update you just you just press on the screen and you can um, display a different watch face you know all so instantly it's great it's like having a change of environment I, I, I think the technology really spoils us now I found the heart rate monitor varied to the Tick Watch 2 and my resting heartbeat let's try them both is out kind of significantly 
I'm not interested in all these sleep monitoring and statistics things that are becoming an increasing obsession today. You know, when I sleep, I sleep. I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night by an alarm telling me I need to change my sleep patterns. <laughs> but yes, although I play badminton, I'm pretty fit for my age. I'm not obsessed with this fitness thing that the whole smartwatch market taps into. But I will be interested to try out the badminton app and see what that does. It's novel. I don't need to know. I mean, I, I know when I'm fit and when I'm unfit. OK, so that's about it. As I say, please limit your comments to adding your personal knowledge, experience of this watch. So I'm presuming, obviously, that you, you already own one. But for those who are thinking of buying this watch, I hope it is useful. I, I must say I do like it, but excuse the pun, but time will tell. Thanks for watching.